am the owner of facepaint.com. And I have the all too fabulous Juliet Eve, who is uh, has a wonderful face painting school, a soon to be app. And um, and then we are going to learn all about color theory today, which is always a good topic. Everybody wanted this last time uh, Juliet was here. So I think this is the moment. Juliet, take it away. Wonderful. Well, hello, everyone. Um, it's great to be back. And thank you so much, Blake, for inviting me back. It's, it's always a pleasure. Um, so today, what I thought I would do is look at color theory, if you like, the color wheel. Obviously, it's a vast subject. So we're only going to touch on it where it comes into play in face painting, really. Um, so my name is, yes, Juliet Eve, and I run the Fam Club. Um, I've actually got some lovely little colour wheels made up, especially, um, okay. which I is quite fun because your, it means... It's, I'll turn off your video now so you can show the colour wheel a little bigger. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So there we are. Here's my colour wheel. And as you can see... There's a big one there on the outside. And I've also got this little one, which um, I produce specially for the fan club. And it just means that people can keep this in their kit because people really struggle with, uh, you know, with how colours work on the face. Um, and if you do receive one of these, it's got a little QR code so you can go straight onto the site and actually learn all about it. So um, the colour we at Blake cleverly reminded me that the color wheel was actually well invented designed call it what you like um by newton don't know what date blake do you know a while ago yeah a few hundred years ago i think anyway yeah no it's, it's um, been a bit it's been a bit since we've had newton i think i'm just going to say that for the record yeah 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 you you couldn't get him booked in could you slight problem so hey you've got me instead um, so let's look at this no, one. No, I really couldn't. You could either, really. Uh, so what we have here, do you want to put this on, on large? Because at the moment, is it on large for you? No. What? Blake, um, can you enlarge this so that part is the no, color wheel? No, you can hold it is, closer is... to the camera or you could move the camera in. But alas, I cannot do more. Um, not Can't from you here do anyway. Spotlight? Can't do spotlight. No, not on Zoom. Not that I know of. I do. I do it all the time. Spotlight on a webinar? Yeah, spot. Or, or, oh, spotlight yeah. for everyone, but that just puts. It okay. makes this bigger. Yeah, that's better. Thank you. That's, okay, that's what I like. <laughs> I learned something new. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Hi, so, everybody. Hello, Helen. Hello, Gilbert. Hello, Dominique. So here we have the three. Let's start at the very beginning. Something you probably, hopefully, learnt at school um, is our three primary colours. So we got red and yellow and blue. Those are the three primaries. And these, um, this, you know, R, RYB, as it is, really applies to paint. It's not the same as digital colors or in printing, just bear that one in mind. Um, so these are just when it comes to paint. So when we we take these three colors and in theory, you can mix any color you want. However, it doesn't quite work like that these days because there's so many other stuff in it. There's fillers and, and lots of other colors and so on. It's not a pure color. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, if you if you mix two primaries together, you will get the secondary. So if you mix your red and your yellow, you will get orange. If you mix your yellow and blue, you'll get green. And your red and blue, you'll get purple or violet, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Now, names is very confusing, as you probably know. You know, what one person's olive green is another person's, I don't know, verdigris or something. So you know, that isn't a precise art. Now, the other thing to bear in mind when it comes to mixing colors is that 
you can if you you know if you look in facepaint.com or wherever you want other face painting shops you'll see they have lots and lots of different reds yes so depending on what red you mix with what yellow will give you a different orange mm -hmm. so you know sometimes yellows have quite a lot of white in them or something so they vary a lot so for instance you know this yellow and this blue um i'm not sure which ones of those it would make but I could show you on a piece of paper. I'll do that in a little bit. So first of all, just back to the basics. OK, so you've got your primaries and then secondary colours, these three, purple, orange and green. Mm -hmm. And then you can also make your tertiary colours, which just means thirds. So if you mix a primary with a secondary in between, it would give you red, orange. If you mix a, a green with a blue, you're going to get a blue green. And we sometimes call that turquoise mm -hmm. and so on. Red, violet, yellow, orange. Stains and so like a devil. Ah, turquoise, it does. But it does depend on which pigment is used to make the green or the purple. Uh, uh, or, yeah, or the yeah. Or blue. So it's all about the pigments. And uh, I was telling Blake a little earlier on. There is an amazing book called The Secret Lives of Colour. Um, I couldn't find it in my bookcase, as is the way, but try and remember it. Secret Lives of Colour by, is it Acacia St. Clair? Yeah. Anyway, look uh, at it on Amazon. Because I, I just bought it for my wife on Amazon. So because based on this conversation, it was fantastic. Yeah. Secret Lives of Colour. Yes. And it gives you the history and, and the well, not exactly the chemistry, but for instance, you may know that turquoise um, is another name for a stone, a mineral that you find in the ground. And so sometimes they would actually use that stone and grind it, turn it into a powder and then mix it up with with different different fillers and whatever it is. Um, sometimes red. Um, is made from cochineal, which is actually a beetle. Um, you've got things like burnt umber or uh, yellow ochre, things like that, which are stones, literally. They are minerals, which they are ground. And back in you know, Leonardo's day, he would have had um, his servant to mix up his paints so they would be ground down and then mixed with goodness knows what. To It could have been white of egg or... or you know, oils and all sorts of things. Um, I mean, if so it's well in worth Leonardo knowing. Leonardo da Vinci and uh, Isaac Newton in the same face painting webinar, I think we've achieved greatness. I'm very pleased. <laughs> I'm very pleased as well. I am very pleased. Yeah. I've been trying okay, to work Isaac person. Newton in for hours, for, for months. At this Oh, uh, well. There you go. And yeah. I'm actually going to introduce another very Hello, Germany. Not so famous, but here we are. This is the other book I want to show you. This is fascinating. So Werner's Nomenclature of Colours. And this book was actually, well, not this particular issue, obviously, um, was used. He took it with him on his voyage. Uh, sorry, Charles Darwin took it with him on his voyage on, on the Beagle. Um, and because each colour here, they show you, let me find a, a, a few pages, some examples. Uh, let's go for, here we are, here's some blues, for instance. So I know it's probably difficult for you to see, but for instance, this name is called, this blue is called Prussian blue. And then one column says animal. So in that, it's the beauty spot on the wing of a mallard drake. That's the blue it is. Or a vegetable, it's the stamen of a bluish purple anemone. Mm -hmm. Or the mineral is a blue copper ore. Okay. Um, for instance, this one, greenish blue here. It doesn't have anything under the animal, but it's the great fennel flower. And it's also a turquoise uh, what does it say? There? flower or something. Anyway, it's some kind of stone. So it's another wonderful book. 
absolutely delightful. And it was uh, published, first of all, in about 17-something. Averna, he lived from 1749 to 1817. So it's just gorgeous. I love it. So there you go. There you if you go. really want to have fun naming colours, look at Werner's nomenclature. Okay. Okay. Now, given a colour wheel, uh, here you are, a professional face painter. Maybe you're starting out. Maybe you've been doing it for five centuries. Hi, Saki. Um, uh, how do you use this devil? Right. So there's a lots of things you can learn from it, lots of things that are useful. First of all, it's the knowledge of what is the complementary color. So complementary colors are opposite on the color wheel. So red and green, for instance, are opposite. And just to show you an example, when you put opposites together or next to each other, here's a little example. So you get the red and the green and they put next to each other. OK, and that is, you know, if you've ever seen face painting, whenever there's like holly and, and holly berries, for instance, these are just paintings I did on paper but they always pop next to each other. They really go well. It's because they're so f the furthest away on the color wheel. And so they really work beautifully. And the same goes for say blue and orange. I did a little sketch earlier on of a blue and orange. Again, it, they, they, they're so bright next to each other, such, so far apart. So they complement each other. However, what you have to know is you cannot mix them. So if I get a little bored. And they will all because they will show all you become what brown. Exactly. It becomes a kind of brown. So if I take some, say some blue and some orange. And put that there. And then we'll get the bit of blue and mix that up. It's roughly I the same that. amount I was trying to put on. Well, this is quite a greeny colour, strangely enough. And this is what I was talking about when it, it depends what the orange is like. And a different orange might have produced a more browny effect. So if we then have, say, just one more little example. If I took some red. And again, this red is quite pinky. It's got a bit of blue in it to make it almost purpley. So if I put that there. And then we get some green as well. And it depends which green I use, but let's have a bit of the dark green. Mm -hmm. And if I mix that in, and again with a cleaner brush, and that's actually made a, quite a purpley colour, strangely enough. But anyway, what normally happens is you get a very kind of dirty grey colour, sorry, dirty sort of brownish colour. Um, but it does depend on your first colours. See, that's really quite grey. Yeah. So what I'm saying yeah. is, don't put them next to each other and then blend them. In other words, don't put them on mm -hmm. a sponge and blend them together because it just it just looks awful. Um, I could just Hello, do a little bit with a sponge just to show you what happens. So if I have my red here on the sponge and I put some green on the other end, put that there. And then I'll put the red next to it and start blending it, you get a very murky colour in the middle. But as I showed you before, if you put them next to each other, they pop. OK, Fantastic. so and that's what complementary colours are. When they're next to each other, they complement each other beautifully, but you can't mix them. OK, so saying any opposites, so orange and bluey green, um, 
you know, yellow and purple. You can't mix those. You can't blend them, should I say. So, yeah, that's that's important thing there. Now, the next thing to consider when it comes to colour theory is which colours can you blend? So the colours you can blend are called analogous, analogous. And these are the ones that are next to each other on the colour wheel. So these three or four, you can blend together. And that's what we often do on, a, on say, a tiger. And it just looks beautiful when they're blended together. So let me just show you a quick example. I could get my board and just show you how we can do that. By the way, these are new boards I've just got, which are chopping boards. They're quite thin. And they're lovely. Interesting. So I'll get another sponge and show you how we can blend three colours or even four. So I'll blend these because these are analogous. So they're next to each other on the color wheel. So a little bit of yellow, bit of orange and some red. And I'm going to put all three colors on this sponge. That's why I like these big sponges. Of course, you could use a split cake. I prefer to choose my own yellow, my own orange and my own red. So to do it, I always load the center one first. I just fold that sponge in a little bit and just fill the center of the sponge with the orange. So that's there. OK. Mm -hmm. And then the red at one end. And then the yellow at the other end. I just pinch the sponge and just fill it at that end. OK, so now we've got the three colours. And I'll show you how they blend so beautifully. So I'll just put the red down and then roll the sponge onto the orange and then roll it again and we get onto the yellow. And this is what I do on tigers, on butterflies, whatever. I just choose my own colours. Now, at the end of this, thinking about the colour wheel, I could then add on another colour, an analogous colour, next to the red that way, so I could put a bit of purple in there, and those two would blend nicely. So I could do that. There's my red sponge. Again, a, few, a drop of water. I always use a dropper. And I'm going to put the purple here, which is next to it. There we go. And put the purple down here. And then I can blend because I've still got the red on the sponge there. And we go into the purple. And that end, if I wanted, I could put a, a green. And then you'd get your rainbow. So these are analogous because they go... They're next to each other on the colour wheel, so they blend beautifully and look really lovely. Now, in terms of like split cake design, is that the way you would do that? Below Italy? Uh, up to a point, yes, but it's always nice to add, say, white or something very dark in between. Mm -hmm. But if you try on the split cake when you're making them uh, to put, say, yellow here and then a purple, you'll run into problems because they are not next to each other on the color wheel. They are opposite. Right. So, you know, split cake that's got that next to that on it will not work. Right. Likewise, you 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 know, it would only be an idiot who would put a red next to a green on a split cake. Wow, but if you make them analogous, an they're beautiful. Yep. Okay. <laughs> well, or somebody who's just likes really unusual colors, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll show you something else. If we think about complementary colors again, and here we have a yellowy orange. So let's find yellow orange, and opposite is a bluey violet. Mm -hmm. And they are 
complementary colors. So a little trick here. If for instance, I'd done a tiger, a yellowy orange tiger, I could put some purple stripes on it and it would look amazing. So don't always do black stripes. Think about stripes that would go really well. So if I just, uh, let's find a nice brush. Hello, no, we get the... So let's choose a, a purple. As I say, this is opposite on the color wheel. Now you're probably thinking if she puts that stroke over there, surely she's mixing and it is true. However, if you get a very creamy mix like this, then you can just about get away with it. But I'm gonna show you another trick as well in a sec. So let's just put a um, purple, where should we have it? Let's have it like this. There we are, a few little tiger stripes. And they look, they really pop next to each other, you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they look, they look great. They look, yeah, really powerful next to each other. You'll see in advertising, it's used a lot when they use, you know, opposites on the color wheel. Now, what I could do is put a yellow stripe across here because remember the purple is opposite yellow on the color wheel. However, because the yellow is the lighter color, it just won't really work on here. It'll look pretty awful. So my next, for my next trick, Dun, dun, dun. Drum roll, please. Drum roll. Hello, Mexico. I'm just going to show you a, my wet and press method, which some of you might know already. So what I do, that's now dry. I'm going to get a, a, just simply a, a brush that I've put in water bash it off a little bit, it's not drippy. And now I'm going to put a stripe with water like that. And while it's wet, I lay my tissue on it, press down and lift off, and you've got a clean area. Okay, if it isn't completely clean, you can always do it again. Obviously you've got to wait until the, the rest of the base is dry, otherwise you'd be lifting everything off. Let's do another one here. That's a little one there. Again, just lay it. And you could, this works on skin even better, actually, I promise. I do it, for instance, for Captain America. I do uh, the whole base blue very quickly. Then uh, with water, I do the A. Lift it off, and then you can paint the A in white really quickly. So now let's put some yellow in here. Got to mix up a really good bright yellow. Uh, very creamy. Make sure there's plenty of um, yeah. plenty of pigment, plenty of paint, filling my brush really well. Okay, that's all dry. Let's make sure it's not dripping. Now, if I put the yellow here, that works really well. Super bright. So there we are, a few little tricks. Complementary colors and analogous colors, which were underneath. Um, so that, that's where it really comes into face painting is how you can use it side by side. So for instance, if I was doing, I don't know, uh, a flower, Hello, I could California do- California and Mexico. I'm not sure which one. By the way, are there any questions? Uh, which well yellow are you using? Oh, goodness. Uh, this is probably, Sorry, this is my, you know, my home kit that I just use for teaching, really. 
Um, it's probably marina, chameleon marina. It's it's mm -hmm. it's a good color. I really like it. Chameleon marina. That purple I know is DFX metallic purple. It's one of my favorite ever. Mm -hmm. Okay. One so I could do um I know what I'll do. I'll show you a little bit of switch swiping just for the fun of it. So I'm going to mix up some, prepare some orange as well. So here's my brush that I'd filled with yellow. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to switch swipe it. So that means just press down on one side of the bristles and just pull it through. So now I've got some quite enough. Now I've got orange on one side and yellow on the other side. Okay. Yeah. So that's called switch swiping. And then when I make some petal shapes, um, as I press, you can see there's two colors. And by sort of twisting the brush, you get different effects. It's going to load up a bit more. Try not to be in your way. Uh, always a good idea. Always a good idea. Yeah. Marlene says that was a super cool tip, by the way. Oh, yes. It's one I've taught for a long time. If anyone is interested, yeah, I run the, the fam club and it's an online teaching school. And what's the URL? Uh, you have to go to Facade Academy. Mm -hmm. co.uk facade f-a-c-a-d-e facade academy uk and then look up fam club there's quite a lot of people in america members and america uh, sorry and uk and all over actually across the english speaking teach, world it is yes i'm afraid i i speak very bad french but it's about as far as i could go Right. <laughs> now, and there we go. But yeah, I teach every whoops every week live. And there's always time for questions at the end for half an hour. And let me give all of you guys a link for that, and you get a vast discount because you're watching this. Right, probably not actually but uh you should watch it all the same what did you say you get a vast discount now you because you, you we, we recommended you on facepaint.com oh i see vast right now i'm gonna oh. go for the complementary color again so mm -hmm. as i say the petals here i've done in yellowy orange and now i'm going to use my purple to do the, I wish I could remember what it's called, the stamens or something like that. I think that is what it's called. And what brush size are you using? Uh, this happens to be a number four, Lowell Cornell 795, mm -hmm. which is now King Art 7950. This is number four. I've got six, I've got two, I use them all. You know, it just doesn't really matter, but it's lovely for dots. That's why it's good for this. Yeah, Low, Low Cornell is just no longer with us. A great treasure. No. King Art have, you know, copied them or well, whatever, taken over. I don't know what they did, but anyway, they work fine. Now, the other thing to know about color theory, if I add black, so I'm going to put my purple here. If I add black to it, but I'm going to do two purple splodges. Mm -hmm. and yeah, if I add a bit of black, that means it's now a shade. It's the official word, you know. We just think it's darker or whatever, or a different shape, but yeah. So if I put my black here, 
and get the purple, mix it in here. You will get a, a darker shade of that purple. Now, on the top one here, obviously we are actually dealing with, um, I'm sorry, I'm on white board, so it won't show quite as clearly, but I'm going to add white to the purple at the top, and that is called a tint. So when you add white to a color, it's called a tint. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get, I'm washing my brush, I'm trying to get the sort of same amount uh, of paint. So if I add the white there, you get a tint. So pink is actually a tint of red. But there we are. Now we've got a kind of, well, I'd call that lilac, but hey, I don't know what Werner and his nomenclature would call it, but <laughs> who knows? Who That's knows? the thing Verner's, we all use. Yeah, no, Werner, he would probably use the word thou somewhere in there, I feel. Well, that is what, yes. Yeah, well, I think I think Werner would um, say that. Yeah. Uh, now, what's the other thing? And, oh, yeah, the the... The other thing you can do when you're when you're painting, let's get a different board. Wait a minute. You can use monochromatics if you like. So a monochromatic, mono literally means one, and chroma is another word for color. So again, you probably did all this sort of stuff at school, or at least I hope you did. So if we get some red mm -hmm. and I put a bit there and then get mm -hmm. something has the best way to do this. Yeah, let's keep going. So now I'm going to get some white. So in other words, you can make a whole face paint just using, say, red, but adding white or black to it to give it some different ideas, you know, different different shapes, colours, tints, and so on. So now I've got a bit of pink here. Um, a bit more red over there. And then we could have a bit of the black on the other side. Take that over there. So in other words, you could make literally a whole face paint with just red color. So uh, let me just do a, say a flower. Let's do something a bit more interesting for you rather than just mixing colors. Mm -hmm. So let's do a um, flower very quickly. just to give you the idea. Okay, now if I took some white and I take it around the edge, say, I'm going to get this brush and I'm just going to blend it a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's all a bit abstract at the moment. I'm just softening off the edges so it isn't just a, a line of white. Now if I take a little bit of, I'll take a bit of this um, ready black. And I can take that into the center and just take that out. And this will start blending with the red.
I could even use some um, little swirly things. That's actually a technical definition. You, for, yeah, you need to look at yeah, that. swirly things, yeah, most swirly definitely. Things. A bit more red. Again, dip it into that. And, you know, you can start just using different shades and tints of the same color and you can still make a very pleasing picture. I know I'm sort of hurrying it, but I hope you get the idea. Because it's very weird. Normally I can see people and talk to them. It's all quiet. Tell me what they're saying. Oh, I, I it's it's so aggressive. I just can't tell you. No, they're not they're not they're they're just saying uh they're 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 just they're just taking it all in. Okay. If there's any questions, please feel free to ask. Yes, please do. Juliet's a little very nervous happy to... that actually I've made this whole thing up and that it's just actually me watching this entire thing. She's a little she's a little concerned. Right. This is all with uh, just red and white and black. Little centers in there, maybe. I mean, we could even do some um, bit of a uh, one strokey thing. Let's load up with red and put some leaves. And then I can just. So I loaded with red and I'm just going to pick up with the toe. This is okay. what we used to do before there were split cakes, you know. And then I could just Wait. do some little. You can't. You're going to have to prove to me that that time really existed. <laughs> There we go. Just doing a few little leaves just to show you that there could have been a slightly higher contrast. I think you get the idea. Let's get some. I can't say I planned on doing this one, but I think it's quite fun. right i'm going to call that one a day well done <laughs> as a, a monochromatic picture and you could have done with it you know with blue or green or any other color you wanted just by adding white and adding black and you seriously can do a whole thing but what's important is to get the high contrast between black and white um, make sure there is something that's completely white. The center is meant to be, but you know what it's like. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm working this very quickly. Um, and a distinct black. Okay, and then definitely blends in between. So there's that bit. Okay. Now, what else was I going to show you? Um, oh, I uh, well, so Let's... says um, that I don't know about anyone else, but I'm playing along full hands. And Mary Wall says, um, watching intensely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So I know somebody's around. <laughs> Somebody is, um, in fact, now... around. That is absolutely true. Oh, well, that's so nice. Yeah. Now, on the back of this, um, is, is, is it's a lovely one, um, this particular color wheel I bought. So, for instance, here we are with red. If I added red, it stays red, okay? Um, spin that round, red, add yellow, you get orange and so on. Right. Red, add blue, you've got purple. Add white, you get the pink. Add black, you get some very dark red and so on. You can go round um playing with that 
So for instance, if I added the blue to the orange, you get that kind of purpley browny color in here. And if I add the red to the green, it gives a kind of brownie, ready brownie. All right, so it just, just shows a few things about that. But another word that, that's useful maybe, it doesn't really matter, but we talk about the value of a color. So this is value 10, that's white. And as you add um, black, it goes grayer and gray and gets darker. So nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one is black. So these are values. So it's again, it's it's just worth knowing this stuff, really. It really is. Um now the other thing which we taught well, and, and I just didn't to let you so know you've got about 18 yeah. minutes. Okay, lovely. Um where can one buy switch? that color wheel? Asked Chen Chen. Oh, I, yeah, I found them online, I'm afraid. So just you Amazon, know, just you know, they'll, there's a lot of color wheels out there, and, and we do not sell them on facepaint.com. I just so, love uh, it the way it spins around. Yeah. Both sides. It's good. Um, Now, you've also got triads, which, so there's a little diagram under here you might make out. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about the three uh, secondary colors um, and they would be a triad if I just spin round. So yellow, red and purple is a triad. So those three uh, together, sorry, yeah, red, yellow and blue, not purple at all. Red, yellow and blue, okay are a triad so again they're round the color wheel those three colors in a triangle they work very well together all right if you put them on a design those three colors it's great um and you can you can pick up a triad from wherever you like so let's go for say orange and green and violet or purple again very popular actually and you'll see it again in advertising quite often, orange, green, and, and purple. So keep an eye out for that. You'll start to see it a bit more. Um, now, the other thing, which I could switch just to me for a few minutes, mm -hmm. if you could, Blake, spotlight Please. me for a bit. I think, okay, you let me do that. Yeah, if you would. Sure. Um, there we are. <laughs> I'll turn on Ask to start video. I've asked to start your other video camera. And I'll turn this camera off. Okay. There we go. There we go. And I need a spotlight mm -hmm. that, I think. There we are. There we Woo yeah. Like magic. Lovely. Move that out. Perfect. Um the other thing which came up in the fan club, so I ran in the fan club, we we, we do a, a module every month, we do a different module, and we did a whole one on color theory. So I talked about all of this, I did, um, I do a demonstration in week two, and I did a face paint and so on. And we also, I brought in a few experts, Nigh Glorious being one, um, who is a person of color. And therefore, it was interesting to learn about colors on different skin. I also brought in um, a lovely lady from, I hope, I think it was Pakistan. And again, she had a, a different color tone. So we did a whole week on tones, skin tones and the undertone. So whatever color your skin is, the tone on, that you see, okay, the undertone can be something completely different. And that takes quite a skill to learn and I certainly don't have time to teach it here and actually I'm not the best one to teach it because I find it it's quite a difficult subject but the more you become aware of tones and undertones the more you can actually match colors I'm sure some of you have found you start face painting and you I don't know you've got a, a child with very dark skin for instance you put some paint on you think oh 
that didn't work. It looks very gray or something. So you, it, it becomes more important. But even on, you know, on pale skin, you'll know, you'll see some child come up, maybe she's got very gingery hair or auburn. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll see, wow, those yellows and those greens and those golds and the browns suddenly look beautiful. Um, and somehow instinctively, most face painters are pretty good at matching colors, at least if you've been doing it a little while. Um, but it's it takes practice. So as I say, uh, it's on the fan club. We spend Shannara has homework. a good question. When, how do you decide what color combinations to use in a design? I seriously do look at the person. I see what they're wearing. I mean, you can see some fabric behind me. If somebody was wearing that, I would pick out some of those colors. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's some browns and some reds in there, and there's a kind of lovely dull blue. And actually, the the blue being opposite to the, I don't know if you can see it, there's a kind of orangey color in there and there's a blue. And to me, they they jump out. So that's a huge clue of what to paint. Um, if a child, you know, they might say they want a tiger. And again, I'll see what they're wearing. Um, or I'll ask, if sometimes, I don't always, but I say, okay, what what's your favorite color? Well, with certain girls, you know what the answer is gonna be. And if they do say pink, I'll say, okay, what other color do you like? And quite often they'll choose yellow or purple or blue sometimes or whatever, you don't know. So, and if they're still on pink and purple, I say, right, what other color do you like? Then they might say yellow, and great. So now I've got three colors and I'll work with them. If I don't feel like it, I just do something. I say, oh, do you like, do you like gold? Nearly always say yes, that's fine. So I go with it and I just do something gold and I add whatever colors I want and they're probably happy with it. Right. But certainly check their hair, their skin color, uh, their clothes. Um, yeah. And also the, their character. You know, you pick up a lot just by who they are. If they've turned up you know, looking like a goth and black hair and a black hoodie and, and black shirt and everything else. That will give me a an opportunity to I maybe just go with black or maybe black and red or black and metallic green or something. Good, strong color contrast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Certainly answers my questions. It, it, maybe it's gone too far. It's gone too far. What are you drinking? Do you match the Do you match the face paint design to uh, your what you're drinking? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would think so. I'd think so. Yeah. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. It's just squash. It's really nice. Hmm. Um. Any other questions? No, on this is fun. Uh. Uh. Someone suggested making a color wheel from all your favorite paints, which sounds like fun. Uh, Definitely. So no. in my paint palette, I have them actually arranged in a kind of rainbow order, apart from black and white, which are close to me. Mm -hmm. No, no, no other questions right no. now. Okay. Oh, okay. I guess, All right. I guess we're done. Are we done? Well, we can either be done or I can paint one more thing. It's up to you. Why don't we paint one more thing? Oh, no. Let's do that. Right. Let's paint this. Because painting fun. It is. Right, you can change the camera back, Blake. Okay. Testing I your will skills. Do that right now. Okay. Ask to start video. I've asked to start the video on the other one. And I'm stopping video on the one you're on right now. And I'm going to replace the and spotlight. Then Spotlight is spotted. Although, dear Lord, what is Excellent. that? Excellent. Okay. So this is me cleaning my board. I just wet it a lot, and then I just wipe with my new swipes. That'll do it. Okay. So let's do um, a pretty design using some blue and orange. That would be fun. Makes sense to me. 
There's some blue and here's some orange. She's got a bit murky with the yellow, so I'm just going to give that a quick little wash. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's better. Okay. Now, I thought I would put an idea, see if it works. So I'm going to get a little half inch brush. This is a Rosemary & Co. Angular 310. Mm -hmm. I'll get some blue on it. I'm just using this because it's uh, sometimes I like to use a, 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 an angle brush to get some interesting shapes going. So, oh, yes, I know what I was going to do. What were we going to do? Right change of plan. Okay. So we're going to do a bit of a twirly thing here. And we'll take, oh, sorry about that. There we go. Okay. So heading on the inside. We we'll just do some leaves. Mm -hmm. Simple TT strokes. Uh, Bella wants some paint, please. What? I think she wants to know what kind of paint you're using. Oh, sorry. This is um, DFX metallic blue. Again, one of my favorite all-time colors. Such a useful blue. It's got super um, pigment and it just flows. And it's, yeah, can't do without it. And why should you? Exactly. Yep. So I have the blue, I have the green, and I have the purple, and they are just fantastic. Since I've been started, well, since they came out, I've used those. Right, now, let's, so this is my blue, and now I'm going to get some orange and do a some sort of flowers to go with this really, that was all. So do a little stem in between these. We'll see how much time we have. How are we doing? Oh, six, six minutes. minutes, we're doing all right. Doing great. Right, Look flat again, which was nearly clean. There we go. And I'm gonna fill it with orange. Now, you could do this with a one stroke, but I'm just showing you how it works with um, ah. the, co the complementary colors. TT so, a means really nice thick way. To thin. That's right. Yes, sorry, I should have said that. TTT, thin, thick, thin. And I just like doing slightly different shaped flowers, you know? Sure. Everyone does the same old. Um, As a matter of fact, our next webinar uh, with Juliet's going to be all about creativity, adding creativity to your designs. Yes. So I'm just doing these kind of S shapes mm -hmm. with a flat. They look a bit like, um, what's it called? Wheat. Ears of wheat, almost. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, this is just something simple. I just literally wanted to show you how effective it can be when you put your complementary colors next to each other without blending them. Oh, 
next time you look at a picture that that you know someone has painted a face paint and you think wow why does that look so good what is it about it and you just start to notice the colors a little end on each and i mean you know talking about creativity i'm just doing something a bit different you don't often see flowers like that. And again, once you've got the hang of it, they're just as quick. They really are. I feel there's one missing in here. I should have done one there. But anyway. Um, yeah. And then you can add whatever else. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I've used blue and orange. I could have used a bluey green. I could add a bit of green in as well. But two colours, two complementary colours do work very well together um yeah it looks beautiful it looks beautiful and you are a fabulous teacher so everybody should sign up for her courses she does a great job and a lot of people love it so please do um and and as always thank you juliet for doing this um next week we're going to have um uh pam kinneberg doing decotage yeah that should be fun on february 26th mm -hmm. and march 4th we're going to have dutch bahari doing a horse design uh i don't know he wanted to do a horse design and then march 11th we'll have Alodi turnwa doing rainbow unicorns okay so thank you very much everybody have a great evening for those of you in europe and a great afternoon for those of you in the united states or elsewhere i will talk to you later thank you very much Bye. -bye. thank you very much